Hi, everyone. I'm Aura Ogorian with ACAP Advisors and Accountants, and welcome to another edition of the ACAP Recap, where we go beyond the blog and give you quick financial and tax tips. These topics are based on questions we receive from you, or they're based on a current hot topic. In today's episode, we're going to talk about tax buckets. What are they and why every single one of you should have your buckets filled? Every single investment or asset that you own is going to fall into one of three buckets. It's either going to be taxable, it's going to be tax deferred, or it's going to be tax free. Whether you have a savings account, a car, an investment in an LLC, your primary house, your 401k, an insurance policy, every single thing that you own is going to fall under one of those three buckets. So let's talk about the first bucket, which is a taxable bucket. The taxable bucket would include things such as your savings account, a brokerage account, uh, your primary house, a rental property, cars or vehicles that you own, any collectibles such as art, wine, gold coins, or any type of coins like that, uh, investment in a business, investment in a partnership, any, any of those items would fall under the taxable uh, bucket. And the reason why they would fall under the taxable bucket is during the year, as you earn interest or dividends on those investments, you have to pay tax on it. Or if you sell that investment and if you sell that at a gain, you have to pay capital gains tax on it. So as a result, it falls under the taxable bucket. Now let's talk about the tax deferred bucket. The tax deferred bucket would include things such as your 401k, your 403b, an IRA, a pension, social security, and maybe some annuities. And the reason why they would fall under the tax deferred bucket is because when you put money into these assets, you typically get a tax deduction, and then that money grows tax deferred, meaning later on, you have to pay tax on it once you start taking the money out. So during your working years, you put money into, for example, a 401k or a 403b, you get a tax deduction for that. And then when you retire, you have to start taking money out and then start paying tax on that. And the idea behind that is that during your working years, your tax rate is higher. And ideally, when you start taking money out of that account, during your retirement, your tax rate's lower, so you're taking money out at a lower tax bracket later on in life. Now let's talk about the tax-free bucket, which is the third bucket that all investments fall into. A tax-free bucket would include things such as a Roth IRA, a Roth 401k, a health savings account, or also known as an HSA, the cash value of permanent life insurance, to some extent, it would include municipal bonds and other government bonds because uh, either they could be free from a state uh, from state tax or free from state and federal tax. So those are all the examples of what would constitute a tax-free type of investment or a tax-free bucket. So don't worry if you don't remember all the different assets and which buckets they fall into because I'm going to create a link below with a chart that you can download that's going to show each of the tax buckets and what types of examples of investments would go into those tax buckets. So every time we talk to clients about these different tax buckets, the question always comes up, well, why wouldn't I put all my money in a tax-free bucket? Because obviously that's tax-free. It makes economic sense or obvious sense why I should have my money in a tax-free bucket. But my argument to that is, yeah, while it sounds appealing to put all of your money in the tax-free bucket, we don't know what tax rates are going to be like a year from now, let alone 20, maybe 30 years from now when you plan on using that money. So an ideal scenario is to have money in all three buckets. That way, when it comes time to take money out, you have choices on which bucket you want to draw from. So let's say, for example, you had all of your money in the tax deferred bucket in a 401k or a 403b. And then all of a sudden you needed a lot of money for whatever reason, a remodel or some sort of expense. If all of your money is in the tax deferred 403b bucket, you're pretty much limited on what you can take money out of. You can only do a 401k loan or you can do a hardship distribution if you qualify. So for that reason, having your, all your money in just one bucket puts you at a disadvantage because it doesn't give you options. Whereas if you have money in all three buckets and the same scenario comes up, now you can decide, well, I've got some money in a tax-free bucket, I've got some money in a tax-deferred, and I've got some money in a taxable bucket. And depending on what your tax situation is in that given time period, you can decide which bucket you want to take money out of that's going to give you the maximum tax benefit and also the least 
you know, uh, economic impact on your overall portfolio. So it's important to have money in all three buckets and to start filling those up. So that way it gives you greater choices come retirement or even way before retirement when you may need to take some money out for whatever purpose. So to recap, all of your investments, everything you own is going to fall into one of those three tax buckets. And I would encourage you to look at all of your investments, put them into those tax buckets and see where you're deficient and where you need to start increasing those allocations to. So for example, if you do a spreadsheet and you determine that all of your assets have fallen into the tax deferred bucket and you've got very little in the taxable or the tax free, start diverting some new funds into those other buckets where you're underweight in to start building it up and making sure that they have an equal allocation among all those buckets. Because just like asset diversification, where you have assets into different investment types, you also want tax diversification where you have assets in different tax buckets.